when you develop a new way of thinking, everybody is not going to understand it. Everybody is not going to be willing to to go with you to that new place or whatever right. it is, you know? And so for me, I had to understand that, okay, you're walking into this new season. It's going to be lonely. But if you want to get to the next place that God has for you, you have to be willing to take those steps alone. Hey, friends. Welcome to the More Than a Mother Triumph After Trauma podcast. I am your host, LaJuan Moses, and I am a mom on a mission to help you work through unresolved trauma and combat stagnation so you can unleash your full potential and manifest the life and business of your dreams. Join me each week for tangible tips, tools, and strategies you can use to master your mindset and overcome obstacles in motherhood, business, and life, as well as inspiring interviews from moms just like you who are sharing their own stories of triumph in order to uplift, encourage, and empower you on your motherhood and business ventures. At More Than a Mother Triumph After Trauma podcast, we believe you can pursue your dreams and be a great mom at the same time. We are helping you to let go of the past so you can live fully and freely in the present and create the future you desire. If you are enjoying this show, feeling inspired and motivated, learning something new, or just want to show some love, please do me a favor and help me spread the word. Screenshot this episode and share your takeaways in your Instagram stories. Don't forget to tag me at LaJuan Moses so I can share your share. Each time you share the show, it helps me to reach more and more moms just like you. Don't keep this greatness to yourself. Tell a mama you know about the More Than a Mother Triumph After Trauma podcast today. Remember, we are all in this together. Are you ready, mama? Let's go. Joining me this week is a very special guest. Her name is Amika Coleman. Amika is a native of Jackson, Mississippi, She's a wife and mom to three beautiful children. She's also the founder and CEO of Strains of Faith, which is a hair and beauty brand. She was led to start this company after receiving a nudge in her spirit to do so, which resulted in her formulating high quality products to cater to dry hair textures. Amika has always had a passion for learning. She believes her past experiences and education were steps ordained by God to bring her to her current reality. Amika took a leap of faith and resigned from her career in clinical research and now runs her company full-time. One of her greatest recent achievements was overcoming limited mindset beliefs and making fear work in her favor. As a result, her business has received its first six figures in revenue. She credits this milestone to getting out of her own way, persistence, resilience, hard work, determination, and being sensitive to hearing from God in regards to each step he desires for her to make within her business. Her mission is to teach others that if she could find the courage to utilize her faith to work towards building a legacy, then others can too. I had the pleasure of sitting down and talking to Amika about her life journey, the steps that she took to build her business strands of faith, and how she has truly walked in faith to manifest this dream and build the life that she desired to live for herself and her family. So sit back and enjoy my interview with Miss Amika Coleman, founder and CEO of Strands of Faith. Welcome to the More Than a Mother show. This is your host, LaJuan Moses, and today I have a special guest with me by the name of Amika Coleman. Before we get into our interview, I'm going to go ahead and let Amika introduce herself to the More Than a Mother, to the More Than a Mother audience. Hi guys. Such a pleasure to be here with you guys today. My name is Amika Coleman, and I am the founder and CEO of Strands of Faith, which is a a faith-based hair and beauty lifestyle brand. And we create clean quality products that instills moisture into your hair and helps promote length retention. We've been around for two years now, and we're just now coming into our own. So I am glad to be here and to be discussing more than a mother and all those good things with y'all today. That is awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. I can't wait to hear more about your products because they just sound like they are so amazing. But before (laughs) we jump into all the business things, as you know, on More Than a Mother, we strongly believe in storytelling and the power that lies in our stories. And I just believe that everyone has a story and none of us wake up and we suddenly are the person that we have grown to become today. 
So if right. you don't mind, if you could share with our audience, what is that part of your story? What is that defining moment, that aha moment that has led you on the path that you are on today? So, <laughs> so um, my aha moment, um, well, it's kind of one, I don't know if you, it's to be expected. I know everybody have their different aha moments, but for me, my aha moment has to do with my faith. And I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, and I have a very, very strong faith. And like growing up, you know, I grew up in a, the, um, like a church household, going to church all the time and had a strong community of believers around me. And over time, what I realized is that I personally began to feel like I was kind of in bondage, you know, like I felt like I had shackles around my feet at a time as a result of um, just being a Christian. I mean, it's kind of, I know that's kind of sound like harsh. And so, and basically what I realized, my aha moment, like, okay, Christianity is supposed to be freedom, right? You know, God wants us to live a, a abundant life, prosper right. life. He wants us to be full of joy, you know, and things of that nature. And so everything that I was kind of experiencing or seeing in the environment was kind of like going against that was like the opposite. Right. And so what I did was I finally just kind of like blocked out all the outside noise. And I was like, well, let me get go to the source myself. Let me develop a relationship with Christ myself. Let me get in a word for myself and see what this, you know, is really about. And when I did that, that for me was my aha moment. Because in that moment, I got to experience um, Christ like I had never experienced before. And I started to view Christianity in the way that I had never um, viewed it before. Like now I found like I truly found a life of freedom. So I began to experience like never before and like this was a life of true freedom. And you know, God gives us commandments and um, I guess guidelines, so to speak, to follow. And he does this as a way to kind of protect us. You know, we're his kids and any good parent is going to want to protect their kids. And that's understandable. Um, but for me, what I was realizing is that people within the Christian communities were creating these like subset of guidelines or commandments or beliefs that they thought were, I guess, the way to go. And those are the things that I was attached to that made me feel like, you know, I was in bondage and like, okay, this isn't the life that, you know, I initially would have thought a Christian right. life would be. And so I began to pull back from what I had previously been taught. I started unlearning that behavior and, you know, going to the source myself and relearning. And for me, that was my aha moment. And um, it kind of ties back to the business, you know, and I know we'll get into it further, was, you know, when I initially started the business, um, if you, you know, you notice my, <laughs> the business name is Strands of Faith. So I've always had a level of faith even starting, but I didn't know that me starting my business would be the pivoting point to develop that relationship and to further um, my faith, like increase my level of faith. So I would say in a nutshell that Developing a personal relationship with Christ and getting to know him for myself, it was my aha moment. And that changed the trajectory of my life and just the way that I view the world, the, you know, how I see it now. Right. Yeah, that's that's good. That's that's deep. That's really good. Mm -hmm. And I like how you mentioned how you just grew up and it was just things that you knew and observed. And then you felt this bondage and this lack of freedom. And one right. thing that I like where you said that you had to unlearn certain behaviors so that you could learn something different and learn for yourself. And I was just like, when you're going through that moment of unlearning, I mean, it's hard and it's a transition. Like, what were you feeling at that time? Or what were you experiencing as you tried to break that bondage and unlearn that behavior <laughs> so you could learn something new? Girl, let me tell you, first of all, if any of you have ever done something that was outside of the norm, outside of what you normally believed or was taught, um, it can kind of, in a way, feel a bit ostracizing because you're now stepping into somewhat of the unknown. Like, you've never been there before, right? right. So, for me, it was tough in that, in ways, I had to strip relationships and connections that I was previously connected to because, like, when you develop a new way of thinking, 
everybody is not going to understand it. Everybody is not going to be willing to to go with you to that new place or whatever right. it is, you know? And so for me, I had to understand that, okay, you're walking into this new season. It's going to be lonely. But if you want to get to the next place that God has for you, you have to be willing to take those steps alone. And once I became okay with that, I think that's when things started to really change for me. But it was it was a struggle. And to be honest, it kind of still is, you know? It's, a, it's not something that you just... It's one and done, and you know right. you you overcome it tomorrow. It's a it's a journey, right? And so each yeah. day, I'm learning myself over. I'm creating new habits, new thoughts, and things like that. And I'm just really trying to embrace it. And in the process, he connects you with people who you know your vibe attracts your tribe. Right. So he connects you with people who understand you and who are willing to take the journey with you. So right, it's right. always a silver lining. <laughs> yes, it is. I mean, it is hard to, like you said, let go of those relationships. Everyone can't go with you. And I mean, that relates to faith, but that relates to just so many areas of life. Like even when you're starting a business, whatever you're walking towards, when you start going away from the crowd or what everyone seems, sees as normal, there's always that just kind of everyone can't go with you. Everyone's right. not going to support you. But I just think it's important how you just mentioned that this was something you had to do for you and that you kept the focus of this is what you're doing for you. So that's really right. great. Yes. The so door. So what did you discover about yourself during this transition, during this time as you were pushing to your next level and walking through these moments? <laughs> Girl, <laughs> what did I discover? <laughs> A lot. Let me just say, number one, I think I discovered that I am resilient. Um, I've always considered myself to be a chameleon because I can adapt to almost any situation. But just seeing my strength, I saw a strength in myself in a way that I had never saw before. And it just gave me the momentum to to keep going. Like who I am now is so much more different than who I was two years ago when I started my business and who I will be two years from now. My God, if I continue on the path that I'm going and was submitting right. to him and all, like, I'm going to be a force to be reckoned with, right? <laughs> yes, that is, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and it's just, mm -hmm. when you go through those times, it's just amazing how you learn so much about yourself. You discover that strength that you didn't know you had, that resiliency. Like, we know we can adapt as people, but when you discover that strength that it's just like, okay, I'm unstoppable. If I can get through this, then I can just get through anything. Yes. Yes, that's it right there. Yes, yes, that strength. <laughs> it will come when you need it. That's it, exactly. like they say, may not come when you want it, but he's an on time. On time. Yes, right. And I firmly believe in that. Yes. Amen. And that's the truth. That is the truth. I'm a living witness. <laughs> yes, me too. And he will guide your steps, guide your path. And like you said, when those old relationships break he aligns you with people that are having those similar visions as you and that can take that next step that next part of the journey and walk with you because life is just an ever-flowing journey right yes i yes, agree yes. <laughs> do you want immediate access to new episodes products events and freebies join the more than a mother community today head on over to lawanmoses.com that's www.la W-A-N-N-M-O-S-E-S dot -E com and join my community today. I want to hear more about the strands of faith because everything just, like you said, it ties back to every, with you, your aha moment, all that you're going through. It all led you to building this business and led you to building strands of faith. So can you tell us more about strands of faith? Yes. Yeah, so strands of faith. So let me just back up. So basically, I know <laughs> this is probably a um, the boring version of the story that you usually hear, but I like to say <laughs> when people ask me, okay, what gave you the idea with Strands of Faith? What, you know, motivated you to start? And I simply say, you know, the voice of God. He is something that he put in my spirit and kind of like nudged me, you know, and told me to do. And at the time, so leading up to this, I've been in a natural hair community for a while, and um, I first went natural and did a big chop back in 2006 when it, um, you know, kind of really wasn't a thing yet. Mm -hmm. And over time, my thing was once I did that, I felt like liberated. I felt free. I felt, again, like got a chance to know myself in a way that I've never known because I was relaxed 
the better part of my life, pretty much all my life, I had relaxer. And so once I did the Big Chop, um, I, well, I created a community. I had a Facebook, not Facebook, Instagram following, and I would post hair tutorials, hair tips, and things like of that nature. And then I kind of like, um, I guess, growing as supporters on that platform. And so that was my main thing, was just encouraging women to embrace and love exactly who they were, the way that God created them to be, right? Um, I think many times we have struggles with images and what's portrayed in the media like long straight european hair and that's something we tend to kind of like to follow or to mimic and there's nothing wrong with that at all but my whole thing was embrace what god gave you and let it be an option you know but if you want to wear straight hair if you want to get a relaxer do that but first no one believed that you rocking your natural textures like you're a bold and beautiful regardless first and foremost right. and so when he gave me the idea to start Strands of Faith, I had already been passionate about it. And the the funny thing about it was, in hindsight, is 2020, they say, right? And so when I look at all the things that led me up to starting Strands of Faith, it was like he was preparing me for it because my background was in research. I had previously gotten an MBA. And at the time I got the MBA, I had no, no, no earthly idea that I would one day start and own a business. And so everything just kind of came together full, cir full circle and I took all of my life experiences and right. kind of trans, you know, transitioned them into strands of faith starting a company. And so in a nutshell, again, <laughs> he was, he got, you know, dropped it in my spirit to start. I was passionate about it. It was one of those things, passion met purpose. And here we are today. <laughs> That's amazing. But I mean, it just shows how experience is life's greatest teacher and that just comes yes. up in so many things and we don't realize that the paths that we walk on the things that we go through how once we get to the point where we have this tangible item like with you building strands of faith it's like who knew that all those different paths that you traveled on mm -hmm. the different experience that you had would lead you to this point that you are today so just right. shows that Everything in life happens for a reason. Yes. And all things work together for the good of yes, those who do. love him. So, yes. <laughs> yes, they certainly do. Mm -hmm. So what would you say has been the most rewarding part of business? I would say the most rewarding part is mm, probably just simply, well, not probably, but definitely walking in purpose. Like, I really do feel like... Um, strands of faith and everything that I'm doing with community building and um, just the empowerment piece and everything, how it comes together. I really feel like I'm walking in my purpose and also the flexibility behind it all. Like entrepreneurship in general allows me to kind of mold my days, if you will. Like, now don't get it twisted. Entrepreneurship is a whole different beast from like, you know, working a nine to five or having a career because you go from working, let's say, say it 40 hours a week to now 80 plus, you know, right. but in doing so, like I said, the flexibility, I'm able to kind of like create pockets of time to work on my business. And now I can have set amount of time to spend with my family, which, you know, family is the most important and they always come before business, of course. So it's God, family and business. But, you know, it's just rewarding that I'm able to have my own business because I get to control my time. So I would say walking a purpose and being able to control my time. Right. And that is just so important. Like I said, having a family, being a mother with everything that we have to do. I mean, that flexibility just gives a certain just level, a new level to things to where you're able to have that control of your time and manage everything. So taking all that into consideration as a mother, how do you find yourself managing all that you have going on? I mean, you mentioned entrepreneurship with the 80 plus hours and then yes, you do have control over your time, but you also have your family, your kids and all those things outside of this. So as a mom, how are you managing it all? <laughs> so oh gosh and you know you'll hear me say this a lot I say this um pretty much across all my platforms like I don't really believe in balance when it comes to managing a company and managing a family and things like right. that I I believe in prioritizing and so that alone is the number one thing that I do in order to keep my sanity and in order to keep everything you know running smoothly 
So I set aside things like, for instance, in my business, I have an unlimited amount of tasks that need to be done and completed. So I batch those out. I said, you know, um, put different things in different categories, give them deadlines, and then I'll get those completed, right? And then I try to make it to so where, like, so for instance, with our day-to-day -day schedule, my husband, thank God for him. I'm so grateful for him. He is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> but, but yeah, he take our kids to school in the morning and he brings them home in the evening. So he drop them off and pick them up. And so that frees me time to just get up and just hit it hard, right? right. But I know that they're going to be home by a certain time. So when I know that they're on their way, I wind down, get a stopping point. And then when they get home, I make sure that all my time is dedicated to them in that time, in that time frame. But I mean, to be honest, I can't lie. <laughs> Sometimes I do do a itty bitty bit a business in there only because when you're running a company solo like me you I mean it's just it has to be done and that's where the sacrifice comes in at but they also know and understand that mama run a business you know I I try my best to include them in every aspect of it like you know um sometimes they'll help me pack the orders they watch me make the products and you know they'll ask the help can I do this and can I do that and so they feel included you know and so just making sure that my time is allocated in the manner that it needs to be and then also including them as well is how I manage it, you know. And of course, this is going to look different each season. Like each season um, is going to bring about a new set of challenges and a right. new set of priorities. But currently, this is how I do it. And I can honestly say that now, um, I'm at a pretty happy place with how I have my time now. In the beginning of starting a business, it looked totally different from right now, right? Because right. that was just like crazy mode. But but yeah, so they are a priority and I just keep that in the back of my mind that I can't neglect them, you know? Yeah. So. And that's true. I mean, I'm with you. I'm one, I don't believe in balance. Like you said, it's all about prioritization. And I just believe in getting life to work together in harmony. And it seems like that's what you have managed to do in your household with your business and all that you're doing. And I think that's an important tip that you've thrown out there to find a way to include your kids in your business. So not only are they seeing the work that you're putting in and seeing what you're building, but then also you're still getting that time with them. They feel like they're involved and that they're helping. So you're still able to pay attention to your kids and pay attention to your business at the same time. Yeah. Like I said, it looks different in each season, but I think that's really good to find a way to include your kids and in what you have going on right yes <laughs> yes 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 i am loving all of this are you looking for a speaker for your next in-person or virtual event well look no further in case you didn't know i lawan me her she yes me and the speaker that you need to make your next event a unique, enjoyable, and engaging special experience. Whether you need an event host, a facilitator for workshops and or trainings, a keynote speaker or someone to participate in your conference event or panels, someone to help lead your event, be it a social media event, a virtual event, in-person event, small or large conference, or even just to be on your podcast, participate in your Facebook groups or any of your other social media platforms. Look no further. I am here and I am ready to be a part of your next event. If that sounds good to you, if you're looking for someone to come speak about all things motherhood and more, be it productivity, priorities, mom guilt, rising above your obstacles, and so much more, head over to my website, lawanmoses.com forward slash speaking, and fill out my speaker interest form. I can't wait to be a part of your next event, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. So, Vika, you told us a lot about strands of faith. What I'm interested in knowing now is what type of products, tell me more about the products that strands of faith has to offer. 
So your eye products can be used for kinky, coily, curly textures, so a multicultural texture, um, if you have type 4 hair like me, type 3 hair, and basically what our products do, they instill the moisture and they increase the longevity of your moisture over a couple of days. So for me personally, when I created the initial products, I was able to get 15 days straight without re-moisturizing my hair. And I know everybody's hair is different. Yes, yeah, so I know everybody's hair is different, but um, the products are created in order to basically increase your moisture levels and the longevity of uh, before you have to re-moisturize your hair. Thank you for telling us about your products. Can't wait to get over there and check them out. So do you have any tips that you would offer to a mom? As, we, as you just mentioned, you have it all with the prioritization and including your kids. Those were like your main tips. But if there's a mom that is struggling that perhaps with mom guilt or struggling to start to pursue her dreams or just trying to find a way to get some control of her time and just feels like it's impossible. Is there like any tip that you would give her? So if you think back to when you mm -hmm. first were starting out in business and you said it looks different now than it did back yeah. then, mm -hmm. what tip would you give to someone that may just be starting Ooh. out? Uh, well, I, this tip can actually go across the board and this okay. is something that I learned later and I'm still learning, but the number one tip I would say is fill up your cup first. Like yeah. fill up your cup first. Like we all know you can't pour from an empty cup, whether it's pouring into your kids, your spouse, your job, your business. And what I find is that many times moms tend to feel, I mean, we're nurturers by nature, right? Right. And Moms tend to kind of put their dreams on hold, put themselves to the back burners, and put their kids and everyone else to the forefront. Now, call me new school, but <laughs> I just don't believe in doing it that way because I feel like, okay, at the end of the day, right, we raise these beautiful um, the gifts that we have, our kids, but one day they're going to go on to live their own lives. They're going right. to have to experience the world for themselves. And the best thing you can do for them is to prepare them for that. But also at the same time, you have to live your life because when they're long and gone and then you're left with nothing and you're looking back and like, wow, I spent all my time preparing them for their lives. And now I feel like I don't have one, you know? Right. And so that's my number one tip is to make sure your cup is full first before you pull it, pour it into others. You don't have to put your career on hold. You don't have to not pursue your dreams, not pursue your passions or your hobbies. You don't have to not do any of those. You just have to find a way again to prioritize it, but never lose yourself um, in the midst because it can get very noisy. You hear all type of advice and suggestions from a lot of different sources. But at the end of the day, you have to tune in and find out what is it that really makes you happy? Like, what is that one thing that makes you happy? And then don't go back on it, right? You know, don't right. go back on it. And I, and that's another thing, traditional Christian belief will have you to believe that a mom is supposed to stay home, cook all day, do all of the, the, the dishes, the laundry, clean up, tidy up. And, you know, at the end of the day, she's exhausted, right? She's right. exhausted. And if she's the only one doing all those things, then what does that leave for her? It's, let, it's a little room for her for self-care and to kind of, you know, put her plan in action to get her own thing going. So I would definitely say ensure that your cup is filled up all the time. If that means uh, extra 30 minutes in a closet with your your face on the floor praying or if that means going to the spa for a pedicure, whatever it is. Your family, your kids, and your um, husband would be better because of you when you're whole. So and that, don't that take that for granted. <laughs> that's definitely true, man. That is, was one of the driving forces behind the foundation of More Than a Mother and this whole podcast and show and wherever it's going to go from here because I was running into so many people that were have been mothers for so long. Now their kids are getting older and they're looking around like, okay, now what am I supposed to do? Like they put themselves into their kids' activities, and now they find their kids are older, becoming more independent, maybe leaving the house, whatever's going on. The mothers are now looking around like, okay, now what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. And it's like they would always ask me, well, how are you doing it? You seem to be doing X, Y, and Z. And it's like, yes, you can live your dreams. You can do the things you love while still raising right. your family and having your kids involved in activities that you just 
you find a way to, and once you make yourself that priority, it really does become mm -hmm. easier. I mean, it's not an overnight thing because we do it just out of habit of thinking we're supposed to put everyone before us. But once you get that mindset of, okay, I need to take care of me first, because if I don't take care of me first, I can't mm -hmm. take care of anyone else. And I'm no right. good to anyone else. I mean, that's really good because I am a firm believer in filling your cup up and not being able to pour from an empty cup. So Yes. Yeah, yes. that's really, really good. Amen. <laughs> yes. So if you could just leave us with just thinking back to when you were younger. It doesn't have to be. I say ask people to think back to their 18-year-old self, but it doesn't have to be your 18-year-old self. But as you were thinking back to first getting your independence, your 18-year-old self, if you could give a message to that girl, what would you tell her knowing what you know now? <laughs> Listen, oh, I would have a lot to tell her, but I would start, I would just say, listen, Amika, in your 18-year-old beauty, beauty girl, you are beautiful, you are worthy, you are honorable, you are smart, you got the juice, like, you got it, so <laughs> walk with your head up, you know, life won't always be easy, you will fail, and you will succeed, so, like, embrace the journey, it's like, Life, when we look back, you know, we all the seasons that we've been through, all the struggles, we always feel like in that moment when we're going through, like it's the end of the world, right? And then when we get to the other side, we're like, oh my gosh, I made it through. And so, and that's basically been my whole life up until now. Like I've been through some storms, honey. <laughs> I've been through some things. And the 18 year old me was, I thought I had it. Well, I wouldn't say I thought I had it figured out. I was trying to figure it out, but I had much lower self-esteem than I had today. Um, you know, just trying to find my way. At 18, you really have a lot more pressure on you, I think, really than any other time, because that's the time you're kind of coming into your own, you're going to college or you're getting a job or you're doing, you know, whatever, as you transition out to adulthood. So it's a lot of noise. And so if I could just say, be still, just um, find your voice, be authentic, be genuine, pray, have faith, you know, just allow God to guide each and every one of your steps. If you allow him to guide you, then you can't go wrong. Even when you feel like you're in a down season, your up season is to follow. So I would just tell her to hold her head up and enjoy life, right? Just enjoy life. That is awesome. That's some, some great advice for your younger self. And it's amazing how when we get that wisdom, we can leave that advice. And I just thank you for sharing that with us. So before we That's go, it. can you just tell my audience where they can find you, what great things you have? By the time this episode's aired, you will be in full mode. So if you just want to share all the greatness that you have going on in your business and all of that Sure. Uh, well, you can find me personally on all social platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, wherever, at Amika Coleman. That's A-M-E-K-A-C-O-L-E-M-A-N. And I think the links will be in the show notes. Yes. Um, but you can find me at Amika Coleman on all platforms. And you can find Strands of Faith on all platforms at Strands of Faith. So I just want to thank you, Amika, for joining the More Than a Mother show today and sharing your story and your business with my audience. It's just been a pleasure to talk to you, and we will have to chat again soon. Thank you so much for having me. It was my pleasure. Do you want immediate access to new episodes, products, events, and freebies? Join the More Than a Mother community today. Head on over to LawanMoses.com. That's www.lawannmoses.com and join my community today. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, leave a review, and most importantly, share this episode with all of your mom friends. Let's continue to grow our mom community and support each other. Remember, together, we've got this.